In a previous video, I took a look at protected bike lanes that are built on quiet side streets. I said that I would prefer the protected bike lanes to be on main streets, directly in front of all the stores that tend to line good main streets. Well, I was recently in a city that has put protected bike lanes on a main street. So, in this video, I'm going to show why I prefer protected bike lanes on main streets. Also, I'll show what I liked and didn't like as I rode around the self-proclaimed most bike-friendly city in the U.S. In my previous video, I compared the protected bike lanes in my city to urban freeways. They are mostly built with a suburban bike commuter in mind. Well, they are also built with the SUV driver in mind. Except for the grid of protected bike lanes in the downtown core of my city, all the protected bike lanes are built on quiet, residential streets, often parallel to main commercial streets. My city is definitely not alone in doing this. A recent book I read looks at bicycle infrastructure from a Marxist geography perspective. From this perspective, the sole purpose of bike lanes is to maximize the flow of labor, which is the same purpose as urban freeways. As someone who wants to experience my city from a bike and use a bike to fulfill my daily needs, a protected bike lane on a side street is not ideal. So I was very excited to experience a protected bike lane on a main commercial street. I recently took my Brompton with me on a trip to Long Beach, California. Thanks to Bikes for Adventure for all the travel tips. This is the protected bike lane on East Broadway. In about 2019, the city put this strode on a diet. One travel lane in each direction was removed and a protected bike lane was installed. The parking lanes have been maintained, though it's likely some parking was lost. As should be done, parking is not allowed too close to the intersections. This gives better visibility of people on bikes to drivers who need to cross the bike lane. The city has included a door zone buffer and bollards. I was able to flow my labor along that bike lane as fast as I can ride in the bike lanes at home and felt quite safe doing so. Although, the two times I rode in the bike lanes, the road wasn't very busy. I don't know the area very well, so I don't know if the road is always that quiet or if the bike lane shifted the SUV traffic to Ocean Boulevard, which runs parallel to Broadway. What I do know is that I really prefer riding on the main street in safety and being able to see all the shops. There are numerous restaurants, barber shops, salons, clothing and convenience stores along the bike lane. Best of all, there is a bike shop. If I lived within a 15 minute ride of Broadway, I would probably go there often, as long as I felt safe for the rest of the ride. As well as the protected bike lane is designed, for North American standards at least, it's not perfect. The door zone buffer is only paint and the bollards are only plastic, so drivers tend to park in the door zone. Elsewhere in the city, it was apparent how flimsy the bollards are. They look more imposing than the thin, flexible posts that are commonly used, but they aren't real protection. I also saw many SUVs parked beyond the legal limits, which limits visibility, so it's a safety concern. People also store their garbage cans in the bike lane, and it wouldn't be a bike lane in a busy area if it didn't contain a parked vehicle. One more little positive are the decorative bike racks, while a little negative is the quartz and the paving material. The sparkling kept me wondering if there was broken glass in the bike lane until I came across actual broken glass. So those are my impressions on a protected bike lane on a main commercial street. What else did I experience while riding around the self-proclaimed most bike friendly city in the US? Let's start at the bottom and work our way up. As good as East Broadway is, 2nd Street is the exact opposite. A Shero is worse than no infrastructure and this strode is one of the few ways to cross Alamitos Bay, so it's likely very busy. Luckily, the two times I rode down the street, it was very congested, so drivers were unable to pass me. I considered slipping between the travel lane and the parked cars, but I was too worried about getting doored or having a driver turn into me from either lane. If this strode got the same protected bike lane as Broadway, it would be fantastic for biking to all the shops. In fact, I would love to read a study that compares the economics of the businesses on Broadway and 2nd Street before and after the bike lanes were installed. Another thing I didn't like about riding around Long Beach was the variety in the biking infrastructure. The number of streets designated as bike infrastructure is a lot. However, when you actually ride there, you never know if you'll get a protected lane, a painted lane, a quiet street, or a shero. You might even get a golf cart path. Kudos to whoever got this into Google's GIS data and challenge accepted the next time in Long Beach. I'll use an example from Long Beach in a future video on wayfinding. A related negative is the gaps in the bike infrastructure. Whether it's low quality bike infrastructure or no infrastructure, if there's a gap that makes you feel unsafe, 
that's a nudge to drive. I encountered a few places where the bike infrastructure just ended abruptly. Since I don't know the city that well, I had to either blindly follow my GPS or go exploring, all while my stress level went high. One more negative was the lack of signs for bikes. I didn't see any bike specific traffic lights and often signs were absent when people on bikes are expected to switch from a bike lane to a service road. Wayfinding signs could have been better and I either missed the bike tour signs or they were completely missing. Again, I'll say more about the wayfinding in a future video. I do have some positives. The recreational trail by the beach is separated for people on bikes and people walking. The view is also better than the recreational trails in my city. But the biggest positive is that it seems the city is actually trying to improve its bike friendliness. I doubt Long Beach is the best, but with the amount of bike infrastructure I saw and the amount they claim to have on maps, it seems like the city is making an effort. From now on, a protected bike lane on a main commercial street will be my main criteria for if a city is serious about biking. If your city doesn't take space away from SUVs when creating bike infrastructure, it's not real bike infrastructure. In fact, anything that doesn't take space away from SUVs is SUV infrastructure, since removing bikes from main streets only encourages more driving. And that's all I have to say about that. If you find yourself in Long Beach, take a bike or use the bike share. While it still has a way to go, I found Long Beach a pretty enjoyable city to bike around. The protected bike lane on a main commercial street lived up to my expectations. Please consider liking the video if you enjoyed my look at another city than the one where I live. Please leave a comment if you have experienced riding on protected bike lanes that actually take you right to the front of places you want to go, instead of just between the suburbs and downtown. Thanks for watching.